So what we're going to talk about today is how to make our table have legs. You guys have built a simple table out of a cube. Um, we're going to make it a little bit more complicated. So I've started with a cube here, and I'm just going to uh, extend it basically to the edges of the grid and make it a little thinner, just like that. So now we've basically, that, that's about right for our table. Um, <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is we're going to make this, this uh, table have four legs. Um, and there's a couple ways to do this very strategically. And the biggest one is the mirror modifier. So I'm going to go into edit mode. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to go to edit mode. And if you remember, we have our three basic pieces of our object. And those are vertices, edges, and faces. So in order to do this right, I'm going to add a, a modifier called mirror mode. And what mirror mode allows me to do is it actually allows me to um, do something in one quadrant of my object and it will duplicate exactly what I do on the exact opposite side. Now what's really important when you do mirror mode is to understand that you're working around the center of the object. So here you've got this little yellow circle in the middle. That is where the mirror mode will actually work from is that center of the object. And so that's actually really important to, uh, to kind of keep in mind. <clears throat> Well, we could do, well, see, one of the reasons why we want to do this this way is we're going to be extruding the legs out of the cube of the table. And the reason why we're going to do that is we could make the legs with a separate object, but then the textures might not match up. So once we actually do a, like, a woody, uh, like a wooden texture or something on the table, then the textures won't match up and it could look really bad. So here, this gives you the opportunity to make uh, an object all out of one blender object and then your texturing can be a lot uh, more advanced. So the first thing I'm going to do in order to do this is I need to cut my object in half twice. So I'm going to go over to the left and we're going to go to loop cut and slide. I'm going to click on that and then I can go over to the object and I just hover over one of these and you can see this little purple line that happens. Now the way that this works is you're supposed to click and then you can slide it side to side and left click again. We're not going to do that. We're just going to left click and then left click again immediately because it's right in the middle. Then I'll do the same thing over here. Click, click. And now I've split my object into two. I'm going to bring it above the grid so it's actually a little easier for you to see. So you can see now I've split it in half twice. <coughs> So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete the vertices off of these three quadrants and only leave one quadrant left. Now remember, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because the mirroring works around the center point. So I'm just going to um, take these, I'm going to click on them, right click and hold the shift key uh, down and that allows me to select all those vertices. Now there are actually faster ways of selecting them. I'll show you those later, but I don't want to introduce too much at once. So I've now selected all of the vertices along the sides. I'm going to hit X and then it asks me what I want to delete. I'm going to delete the vertices and now I've got just one quadrant or one quarter of my table. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to the um, uh, the wrench, which is the modifiers, and right up in the second column here, midway through, is the mirror modifier. <coughs> and now, right now, you can see that it's set to mirror across the x-axis, and so you see all of a sudden a second quadrant has appeared. But if I also choose the y-axis, now you can see that it's mirroring in both directions. So it's mirroring in y, which is this way, and it's also mirroring in x, which goes that direction. So now it's actually going to be really simple to build my table. And I can make this as advanced as I want to because I've got so many options and it's going to take so much less time than it would if I were doing this any differently. So I'm going to use that loop cut and slide um, strategically to start helping me build. So I'm going to take the loop cut and slide 
And I'm just going to, so we're, that's the top of the table. Here's underneath the table. Loop, cut, and slide. And I'm going to hover over here, click. I'm going to create one, two, do another one here. Whoops, I missed it. Click and slide. So now you can see that I've created a couple new vertices all the way across, but what I've also done is I've given myself a place where I can extrude the leg of the table away from the bottom. Um, <clears throat> and there's all sorts of things that I can do um, if I wanted to. Um, some tables are even built with like a little ridge, you know, that you can like hit your knees on. So let's go a little bit more advanced here. I'll do two more loop cuts and slides. One here and one here. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here in the edit mode and I'm going to change to face select mode. And I'm going to take these faces and I'm going to hit the E key for extrude. And once I do that, what it'll do is it'll allow me to extrude a section down. A lot of times the way I like to do it is I will hit the E key and immediately left click. And now I've got an extrusion that's sitting there, but it's flat with the rest of it. And now I can grab the blue arrow and I can bring that down just a little bit. See that? So that actually looks pretty good. And now I can take, actually I made a mistake in doing that. Let me go back. Shift click on these. This is going to be the leg, this section here. So I'm going to extrude, left click, bring that down a little bit. And then now I have the leg come out from behind that. I select that face only, extrude, left click, and bring that down. And you can see now how all of a sudden and very quickly, I've got a table with four legs. Now, this principle would, would work even if you just wanted a center leg. Um, so for instance, let's, let's, uh, let's undo that um, extrusion there. <coughs> and let's say I wanted to do a leg in the center. I'm going to take loop, cut, and slide, bring it this way, another one, bring it this way. Now I can go back to my face select mode, and I can start bringing out E, extrude, and I can bring out like the center of a table. And let's say I wanted it to uh, get a little bit wider at the bottom. I can, that's OK. I can hit S to scale, and I can bring them out. And now you might say, OK, that that's, looks really clumsy, Mr. Weisford. I want something like a little bit more, you know, uh, you know, as flows a little bit more, as a little more elegant. Fine. Take your loop cut slide, bring it in here. We can scale it back down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can smoothen our corners. So basically, we now have a table that's got a leg in the center. Um, I'm going to undo that. I like the four corners of the legs better. So I'm just going to bring this back out, extrude, left click, bring down my four legs here. Whoop, that's a really short table. There we go. That's much better. And now I'm going to go back to a different modifier, and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. Now this is a really interesting one. I think I showed you guys this before. <coughs> it rounds everything off. So I'll set it to three or four. And you can see how it kind of rounds everything off and makes it uh, look you know, smoother. Um, and what I can do now is using something that we call uh, edge creasing, we can actually control how sharp edges are. So if we go in here, you can see how this is really smooth at the bottom. But I probably wouldn't want it to be smooth right there. So I'm going to go to my edge select mode. Let's turn this off for a second with the eyeball. And I'm just going to hit Alt. And right click, and let's see, it should go right down the line for both of them. Shift. And I can turn this back on, and then I can go to the mesh menu, edges, come on, and I can say mark our edge crease here. And then now, as I move the mouse left or right, it increases or decreases the sharpness of that edge. So it's really kind of really cool. So now you can see how that's really sharp, but my corners are a little bit rounded. I can go in the middle of that too. So, and it's the keystroke is Shift E. So Shift E, and I can make it a little bit more or less. And actually, what I would whoops, a daisy. What I would want to do is uh, I hit Shift Z instead of Control Z to undo. Um, I'm actually going to 
do these all the same time. So now I've got those. Shift E is the keystroke, and now I can kind of set a little bit of a bevel, like a little roundness to the edges, but not too much. Now I'm going to do the base of the legs here. So I'm going to shift right click on these right here. Don't want that one. Don't need that one either. Whoops. There we go. So now I've got the base of the leg here. Turn that back on and shift E. And now I can control how sharp the edge around the leg is. And you can kind of see how that works. And actually this, these two going down because of me making that so complicated, I'm going to make it less by shift E and move my mouse to the left. And you can see how it's making it a little less sharp. And you just start to play with how that works. Then the other fun thing is you can start to do cross sections. So let me um, do the bottom here. Alt click. <clears throat> so I can select all four of these. Shift E. And now I can use my loop cut and slide. Go here. And I can start scaling it up or down to create some cool shapes in my table legs that will be a little bit more fun than, say, um, just a normal you know, shape. So loop, cut, and slide, boom. And the closer those are together, then obviously the sharper you can make these kind of fun little shapes and stuff like that. The reason why I'm showing you loop cuts and slides is because, to be honest with you, loop cuts and slides and extrusion, which is the E key, those things probably make up a majority of the way that you can build objects in Blender. Now, I don't expect you to go to some huge amount of detail here with this table. Just give it some legs, uh, make it look pretty, and you're, you've got your animation done. But I do, you, in order to do this, you do need to do the loop cuts and slides and the extrusion because now it's all one object. <clears throat> and now we can put a nice texture on it in a way that was you know, not going to be possible before. Um, and you can play with the edge creasing and, and all that sort of stuff as we go along. So in review, really quickly, you may take your cube. You're going to use loop cut and slide and then divide it in half twice. You're going to delete 3 quarters of the table, add your mirror modifier, and set it to mirror in X and Y. Once you do that, now you can extrude the legs out of the bottom, and it will make all four of them be identically the same. That extrusion, uh, or that uh, mirror modifier is so helpful. I mean, it's incredibly helpful. Then the two tools that you use to do that are your loop cuts and slides, which basically you <coughs> are creating a new cross section of your object with the loop, cut, and slide. And then the extrusion is being able to take a face or a section and extrude it out. Now, just to show you, you can extrude points, too. So I was extruding faces. I can extrude. You can get yourself in trouble this way, too, really easily. Um, but if I just grab a point here like this and hit the E key, see, I've got a new point. And you can see it makes a real funky little shape there. You, you, you don't usually want to do that. You can also extrude edges. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. Now, here's the thing. These are paper thin. And one of the things that's a real big no-no in Blender is paper thin objects. Um, a paper thin object is actually really bad. And the reason why it's bad is because of the, something called normals, which I haven't really taught you about. But normals are the surface of an object. Normals are opaque on one side and transparent on the other. And it doesn't look like it here in solid mode. But if I were to put a texture on here and then go to render, you would see it from one side. But then when you look up from the other side, it would be invisible. And so you really, there's some real major problems. You have to have, an object has to have, be what we call manifold. In other words, if you were to pour water inside it, the water would stay inside the object. Okay. Uh, when you're doing textures especially. If you have a paper thin object, uh, then it's not going to look right. So well, you want to be very careful. And so for the case of this object here, of making a table, 
the best thing to do to keep that is to go to face select mode and when you're extruding your legs you click on a face and you hit the E key and you can bring it down like that okay and that's how you are best going to be able to do face or, or extrusions without too many problems and you can see how I've got you know the sort of a center leg there okay does that make sense to everybody how that works um, okay that's basically that's basically it. it's a good good start at least